Hey there, fellas. So the winter is slowly creeping in, and some car enthusiasts have been looking into, well, somebody might have just bought a used car, someone else might have been driving their old one for a while and is now looking to replace the coolant. Especially when you buy a used car, you don't know what might be in there. And so here you are looking for a solution like, what do I do, top it off, and which one to use? What if there's some old stuff left in there, would it be bad to mix with the new coolant? I honestly don't even know myself, there is no real information out there as to what might occur. But we've got a car, a bunch of different sorts of coolant. You have several varieties, some of them are based on ethylene glycol, others on propylene glycol. Alkaline, I mean, who even cares? I'm just interested to find out as a layperson if you mix all of these, are they going to curdle or what's going to happen? Okay, let's drain the old coolant, pour in this cocktail and see what happens. Let's do this. So while we are draining the old coolant, I suggest we take all of these ingredients, all of these different coolants, and just mix them in no particular order. Totally at random. And then see what comes out of that. Yeah, immediately they become murky. But I think we should allow it to sit for some time, maybe it will curdle. Maybe it'll form separate layers, maybe it starts flaking, I don't know. It's hard to say. Also, we're not going to be adding heat to the equation. It might make these behave much differently. But this is all out of curiosity, let's just leave them and see what happens to them. And while they're sitting, we'll fill the cooling system of that car with all of this stuff to then do some driving. Let's go! Okay, guys, we are looking good here. We've filled up the cooling system, and I literally put in random amounts of random fluid. Didn't measure anything before pouring it in. Poured in whatever with no regard for precision. And now the car needs to be driven around. Start it, and just use it for a week or two. Right, let the car out into the world for a bit while we wait. So, look, it has been a full month, and these tiny bottles I placed onto this shelf are still here. Nobody touched or disturbed them, they're covered in dust, it's all good. And check this out. A month went by after I poured these in and mixed them around, they became a bit murky, and since then nothing has really happened. Maybe I'll see some sediment at the bottom. Nope, not seeing any such thing. Okay, looks like we're good, nothing has changed. But here the fluids were just sitting in bottles. They weren't getting heated up or anything like that. Not subject to high temperature. But you'll recall that we also filled a cooling system with this stuff. Here we have the car, it was driven every day. And let's see what has happened in here. The car was not overheating, the cooling system seemed to be working just fine. There was no indication that anything was wrong with it. Also, the heater never skipped a beat and is currently fully operational. It has cooled off, and now the interesting part. Something funky inside the radiator. What do you know? So, we've got some residue. I won't say that the cooling system was perfectly clean before, this being an older car. But let's uh, go ahead and drop it and see what's up. We definitely need to drain the coolant, because the mixture we got in there is not for long-term use. Especially in the winter. So let's grab a canister, drop it and see what's up. Okay, let's have a look. It has been drained from the system. This contains a bunch of products of oxidation that have been flushed from inside the cooling system. This liquid is about the same color as what I just saw on the radiator cap. But I'm not noticing any evidence of flaking, or the liquid separating into layers. There just really isn't any sign of that. So those are the results, and this doesn't really look all that bad even. 
Nice. You see, the thing is, I have obviously heard that you're not supposed to mix because of it possibly curdling or something. But as you can see, we've bought a bunch of uh, different types, cheap, expensive, some really cheap stuff. Fluids that are completely incompatible, and we poured all of them into the same system, and after a month of driving, they look more or less okay. Still, I would not recommend you try this. And so there you have it, and there is one more interesting thing we want to try. We've gotten suggestions, this has also been on our list for some time. That is to try experimenting with a certain other fluid. But that experiment we're gonna have to conduct somewhere in a field. Let's go! Alright guys, we've made it to a field. We've got that lovely vehicle right there. And here's what we have in mind. Some time ago, we attempted to replace coolant with flammable liquids, such as diesel fuel. Come to think of it, that's all we tried. But we also wanted to find out what would happen if we poured in gasoline. Anything can happen, right? Not all cars are running diesel engines. And so now, instead of all of those coolants, let's pour in some gasoline and uh, see what happens. We have absolutely no idea what could happen, so let's give it a try. Pour it in and observe. It is in, cooling system is filled with gasoline all the way to the brim. Haven't yet started the car, but the idea is to see whether the cooling system will even perform its function when filled with gasoline. But we are ready, let's fire this up and see how this is going to behave. Is the engine going to overheat or not? We're about to find out. I don't quite understand, but engine operation has gotten a bit worse. Maybe I'm mistaken, or maybe it's just cold. Because it did have time to cool off while we were transporting it here. Okay, there it goes, it is warming up now. The revs go up. And inside the overflow tank we are starting to see liquid. Gasoline in this case. The fumes won't allow me to see whether it's bubbling up, but so far it is preventing the engine from overheating. From what I see, yes, the needle is slowly moving towards the red zone, but the gasoline is allowing the cooling system to work. Even if it is boiling, it's still cooling down the engine. And that's it. Up until a point, the gasoline was allowing the cooling system to work, but now the needle is in the red. The engine has gotten really hot, to the point where we even have an oil pressure light. The engine has overheated the oil together with it, becoming runny, and despite the engine turning at a thousand RPM, we lost pressure. Well, guys, such a result was to be expected. The engine has overheated, and what can we make out of this? That the engine does get cooled, but not all that effectively. Apparently, it's not a great heat conductor. It tries to keep the engine from overheating, but it just can't. Here's something we can try. We'll cut open an ignition lead. That's not a hard thing to do. And we will see what happens. Let's go. Here's what we've done. We've removed um, the blades from the cooling fans so that the air stays still. It's sort of an imitation of electric fans. And right here I've got an ignition lead with damaged insulation. I'm going to carefully connect it to the distributor like so. Here you've got the actual distributor casing.
Engine is running, now well, let's just wait and observe. What? Get the battery out. Yeah, yeah, get it out. Hold on. This one is out. <laughs> Will you look at that? So here's what happened, guys. The fumes quickly started accumulating, and then we saw some white smoke blowing down. As if some wire short-circuited or something. So yeah, white smoke, the burning began where there was plenty of oxygen to feed on, then the explosion happened and the smoke was forced upwards. Uh, yeah, this isn't exactly what you'd call safe. But I'd say we're looking at a 107% success rate. And now we have got our questions answered. You are better off using the exact type of fluid that's recommended by the factory. At the very least, don't go mixing coolants. And make sure to use stuff that's good. Avoid putting gasoline into the cooling system altogether, because this is what you end up with. You can easily destroy your car, and then that's not even the worst thing that can happen. Not to get too somber. This is not safe, and that's all I got for you. You saw it all for yourselves, alright, catch you guys later.